Hi guys, this is Ramon Goose here and in this video we're going to be looking at the guitars of the legendary Randy Rhodes and as Ozzy Osbourne said, his favourite guitar player. Randy Rhodes was born on the December the 6th, 1956 in Santa Monica, California. Randy started playing the guitar at the age of 6 and by the age of 12 he had switched to the electric guitar. His grandfather gave him a 1918 Gibson Army Navy Special, as we can see in this photo here. Soon after, he began lessons at his mother's insistence. Randy was six years old when he picked up his father's very old guitar. He didn't even know how to hold it. After just nine months of attending the lessons, his teacher told Randy he couldn't teach him anymore. As the teacher had nothing left to teach, his first electric guitar was a 1965 Harmony Rocket. The guitar had belonged to his mother Dolores, and she had been using the guitar at her music school, and this was a guitar that Randy first learned to play electric on. He started using this around the age of 12. It's speculated that this guitar was from around 1964 or 1965. Judging by the photos of this guitar taken at the Smithsonian School, which was run by Randy's mother, it's most likely that this was a 1965 H56 model. This was in fact the first cutaway that Harmony made, and it also featured a tremolo bridge and two pickups. In fact, the 1963 Harmony Rocket, along with some other gear, was stolen. Shortly afterwards, much of the gear was found in a dumpster in North Hollywood, but the Harmony Rocket and the Marshall Head remained missing. Ozzy Osbourne announced a $25,000 reward for the return of the items. As you can imagine, the items that were stolen, including Randy's first ever electric guitar, are irreplaceable to the Rhodes family. I am heartbroken that these treasured physical memories of Randy and Dolores have been taken from the family. Not long after this, a statement posted to Instagram by Randy's sister, Kathy Rhodes, reveals that the guitar and amp had been found and returned. Randy's next guitar was the 1970s Ovation Tornado. At the time, he was a rhythm guitarist in a band called Violet Fox. His father obtained this guitar for him whilst working for Ovation Guitars. And Randy played this Ovation up until 1972. He also used it with his second band, Quiet Riot, before switching to an SG. Randy used his guitar with his second band, Quiet Riot. In this photo taken around 1975, we can see Randy with a black SG guitar. Apparently this guitar was originally red and Randy painted this guitar black very soon after he got it. Apparently the SG never stayed in tune. So here we can see Randy with an SG special in the band Quiet Riot. And notice that the guitar has dot markers and also two P90 pickups. Hey guys, I wanted to check out this guitar here, which is a white SG. Now my question to you, could this have been the very guitar that Randy played in Quiet Riot? Maybe he painted it white and installed the humbuckers. Tell me what you think guys. Later we can see that the guitar has a replacement stop tail bridge and also two humbuckers. Quiet Riot's first gig was at Randy Rhodes Senior Prom in 1975. And it's with this very SG special that he performed the concert. The original tuners seem to have been replaced with sturdier machine heads. Here we can see Randy with a 1974 Gibson Les Paul Custom. This guitar was given to Randy as a gift by Quiet Riot's first manager. And his name was Dennis Wageman. Randy received the guitar in 1975. Randy actually thought it was a 1963 Les Paul Custom. But during the UK blizzard of Oztour in 1980, John Thomas, the guitarist for Budgie, informed Randy that it was actually a 1974 model. It was later said that Randy was somewhat disappointed that he didn't have a 1960s Les Paul Custom. Regardless of this fact, it was Randy's favourite guitar in his collection, as this guitar was his main touring instrument. Randy's brother Kelly said that Randy bought the guitar himself from a guitar centre and that it was slightly used. However, during an interview with Randy's mother in 1982, she said that the guitar had come from the owner of a rehearsal studio that the band Quite Right was playing at. There we have three different origin stories as to how Randy obtained this guitar. On this guitar, Randy removed the stock tuners and replaced them with shallows. He also added a bell plate over the truss rod cover. He also had Randy Rhodes engraved on the pickguard. In October 1972, Randy actually saw David Bowie live at Santa Monica. And during this concert, he became a big fan of Mick Ronson's White Les Paul. And this was one of the reasons why Randy chose the White Gibson Custom Les Paul. From 1972, the Gibson Les Paul Customs featured a four-piece body, two layers of mahogany, 
with a thin layer of maple in the middle and also a carved maple top. The guitar was white when it was new, but the nitrocelluloid lacquer had yellowed it over time. It also was heavier than a 50s era Les Paul Custom. The humbuckers which were featured on this guitar were made during an era when Gibson produced the T-buckers, named for the T-shaped tool marking made in the forward bobbin of the pickup. Randy was 22 years old when he auditioned for Ozzy Osbourne. And at the audition he brought his Gibson Les Paul and a practice amp. And by November 1979, Randy had flown to England to start rehearsals with the band. Before joining Ozzy Osbourne's band in 1979, Randy was introduced to a local luthier named Carl Sandoval. It was actually a local guitar player who was friends with Randy called George Lynch, who connected Randy with Carl. Randy really admired the V-shaped guitar that Carl had made for George Lynch and wanted something similar for himself. In July 1979, Randy visited Carl to discuss ideas for his own version of what he had seen on George Lynch's V. The KS Flying V was finished in 1979 and Randy paid $740 for it. And as you can see from the photos, it's finished in black with white polka dots all over the body and neck. Originally, the guitar was fitted with Fender hardware. It was then replaced with black hardware. The pickups were a Dimasio Distortion Plus in the bridge and a Dimasio Path in the neck. Max Norman, who produced the album Blizzard of Oz, remembers that Randy used a polka dot Charvel on pretty much all the guitar tracks. However, the Carl Sandoval V was the only polka dot guitar that Randy owned at the time. So maybe it's possible that Max was talking about this very guitar. Further evidence is this photo from Ridge Farm Studio when he was recording Ozzy Osbourne's album Blizzard of Oz. Sandoval liked Dan Electro necks because of how cheap they were and also how little relief they had. They were very straight and wouldn't fret out on the higher frets when utilising the tremolo bar. Contrary to popular belief, those Dan Electros from the 50s and 60s did have truss rods. In fact, they had two, although they were not adjustable. Essentially, they were just thick eye beams running through them, keeping them rigid. Randy's polka dot flying V featured a Dan Electro neck 25.5 inch scale and 17 inch radius. It was customized to be set into the body utilizing another piece of wood to extend the neck deeper into the body. The body was made thicker to allow for the incorporation of a Fender tremolo block. The Fender bridge and the Gibson style pickups presented a string spacing issue. Randy dropped the guitar breaking the headstock and giving the neck joint a good stress test. The neck joint held and the headstock was a fairly simple repair for Sandoval. The polka dot flying V came to be one of Randy's best known guitars. Randy's two main guitars for recording Blizzard of Oz, which was released in 1980, were his Les Paul and the Sandoval polka dot V. Both guitars were used during that recording. Randy's story with Jackson began in the late 1980s when he contacted Grover Jackson about wanting to design a distinctive new guitar. Jackson and Rhodes met just before Christmas that year and quickly designed the guitar together and they literally sketched out the plan on a paper napkin. The result was what was called the Concord. It was a sleek white guitar with an offset V, a neck through body construction and for the first time Jackson's own name on the headstock. The entire guitar was made of maple. Due to its futuristic pointy aesthetic, Grover was worried that putting the Charvel logo on its headstock might possibly alienate some of the company's more traditionally minded customers and so the Jackson brand was born. They designed a new headstock, an angular take on the Gibson Explorer and made the first Jackson. Randy took the guitar on tour and it quickly became synonymous with him. As a result of his extensive road testing, he came up with a few refinements. The guitar's neck joined the body at the 14th fret. And the guitar featured a compound radius, so 12 inches at the nut going down to 16 inches radius. The guitar featured a different tremolo with a heavy brass sustain block made by a guy called Bill Jerin. And the guitar was painted white with black pinstripes. Randy used this guitar on the remaining dates of the Blizzard of Oz tour with Ozzy. Grover Jackson and Tim Wilson created the guitar initially named the original SIN, Sin, but Randy himself called it the Concord after the supersonic passenger airliner. And this Concord model was quite different from anything Charvel guitars had done in the past. 
This concerned Grover Jackson, who took the control of the company after Wayne Chauvel had sold his interest in 1978. So he decided to rebrand the guitar to Jackson. The Concorde used all the hardware from Chauvel, including a strat like tremolo, except for the pickups, which were same with Duncan's. The second Jackson was made with the help of Grover Jackson, Tim Wilson and Mike Shannon. Although Randy enjoyed the white Concorde model, he felt that the body shape was not as distinctive enough as it could be. So he decided to elongate the top horn on the new prototype. So it had a more modern and aggressive look. The guitar builders at Jackson also added their own ideas, which included a gold pick guard, fixed tailpiece, and strings anchored in the body instead of the tremolo. The guitar featured Grover locking tuners and a Samuel Duncan TB4 in the bridge and SH2 in the neck. It had a through neck construction like a Gibson Firebird, where the neck and centre of the body are one piece of wood, with wings glued onto the sides to make the rest of the shape. Not long before Randy's death, about a few months before the tragic airplane crash, Randy obtained a 1957 Gibson Les Paul Custom, and it pretty much featured the standard things you'd find on a Les Paul Custom, including body binding, fretboard binding, block pearl inlays, and the famous headstock logo, and also including gold hardware. An interesting feature of this guitar is that it came with three humbucking pickups. Although, as you can see from the photos, these are all uncovered. So it's quite possible Randy could have done this himself. Guys, let's check out a few other guitars that Randy was seen with over the years. In this photo, you can see Randy playing an Ampeg ADA6 Dan Armstrong model. This was sometime in the 1970s during his quiet riot years. It featured two cutaways of equal length and came with 24 frets. This photo was taken at Quiet Riot's first show on June 1975 at the La Canada Country Club. Randy can be seen here playing a Dean Flying V, which he borrowed from guitarist Bob Steven. Another Dean that Randy played was a Dean Z, which started its production in 1977. And Randy was seen using one back in the 1970s, although the details of this guitar are rather sparse. The body shape is almost identical to a Gibson Explorer. Additionally, they have a V-shaped tailpiece and strings going through the body. It featured a sunburst finish and was a little different compared to the ones you normally find on Gibson guitars. Randy's Dean Z featured a sunburst finish. Here we have a Gibson Firebird V12 12 string guitar. In 1966 and 1967, Gibson made a Firebird 12 string model. This was called the V12. Aside from a fixed bridge, these guitars also came with two mini size humbuckers. They featured mahogany bodies and mahogany necks, along with a rosewood fretboard, and the standard scale length of 24.75 inches. These are pretty rare guitars, and so maybe only about 250 of these were ever made. And once again, if we check out this photo, we can see the Gibson 12 string featured alongside his polka dot V and his Gibson Les Paul. Thanks guys for watching this video, I really appreciate it. I've actually got a blues course on Patreon which I'm adding to each week, so if that interests you, just click on the link in the description. But until then, once again, thanks for supporting the channel and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, bye.